Welcome to the Now Design channel. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to create a dynamic wire effect in Cinema 4D, now demonstrated to you on the right side of the Moe statue. This effect works with any geometry, polygonal or parametric. What's more, it's fully flexible, giving you endless possibilities for design variations. Let's dive right in. My starting scene contains two polygonal geometry objects, named left side and right side, along with a few cameras to showcase the certain features more precisely throughout the tutorial. To help you understand the scale of the scene geometry, I will click on the toggle active view button. Using the grid spacing values from the top right and front viewport views, you can roughly estimate it. Let's create a dynamic wire effect for the right side geometry of the statue. Hide it from the viewport, because it will get in the way of what we are about to build. Add a parametric cube object to the scene and scale it down using the highlighted size values. Don't use a null object, because the method I will share with you shortly won't work. Parent the cube to the cloner object. Set the cloner's mode field to object and drag and drop the right side geometry object into the object field. Make sure the distribution field is set to surface. The count value is set to 300 for now. By doing this, we distribute 300 cubes randomly across the mesh surface of the right right side geometry. Parent the cloner object to the Voronoi fracture. In the transform tab, set the display field to index. As you can see, we can now view the index values of all the randomly distributed cube clones. At the moment, these index values are random and don't follow any particular order. Let's try to create a continuous path with its points based on the location coordinates of the cloned cubes. To do that, add a tracer object. Drag and drop the Voronoi fracture into the tracer's link field. If it's not there yet. Set the tracing mode to connect all objects, set the type to be spline and set the intermediate points to adaptive. These settings for the tracer object create a dynamic traced path that can change its shape by referencing the location coordinates of the cloned cubes and have an organic path shape without sharp corners. Moreover, the traced path is built by taking into account the indexes of the cloned cubes and connecting the location coordinates in ascending index order starting from zero. Its dynamic nature can be demonstrated by changing the seed value of the cloner object. Experiment with the tracer settings to achieve your own unique result. Let's transform the tracer path into wire geometry by adding thickness to it. Parent it to a sweep object and add a circle object above it, with the radius and number field values set as highlighted. The result we get is promising, but it looks a bit chaotic and doesn't exactly follow the silhouette of the right side geometry of the statue. This happens due to the random distribution of the cloned cube indexes. To fix this, we need to bring some order to it. Add a null object to the scene, set its shape field to circle and increase the radius so its location becomes visible in the viewport. Position it above the statue geometry as demonstrated. Then go to the Voronoi fracture object and in the sorting tab check both the sort result and invert sort options. Next, drag and drop the null object into the distance to object field. As you may have noticed, the indexes of the cube cloners have been ordered. The closer a cloned cube is to the null object, the lower its index. The cool thing about using this null feature is that when you change its position, the configuration of the tracer object's path also changes. For some reason, the tracer object's path isn't responsible when used with the Voronoi fracture. So to refresh it, you need to click twice on the area where the green check mark of the tracer object is located. This fix helped us transform our tracer path into a spiral with directional spreading starting from the location of the null object. In addition, the right side geometry silhouette shape has become much more recognizable. Go to the transform tab of the Voronoi fracture object and set the display field to none. To hide the cloned cube indexes from the viewport to reduce visual clutter. To make it look even cooler, increase the count field value of the cloner object. A higher value results in more accurate mimicry of the right side geometry shape by the tracer's path. To achieve an even better result, select the right side geometry and slightly scale and move it if needed, so that the overall bent wire geometry better matches the size and silhouette of the right side geometry. Create a copy of the sweep object and rename it to sweep master. Hide it and keep it as a backup. 
backup in case you decide to apply any changes to it later. Go back to the original sweep object, select its tracer object and press the C key to convert it to an editable spline. Select it, then switch to points mode and choose the rectangle selection tool. Now you can select and change the positions of spline points or remove them if needed. Removed points don't split the spline into separate pieces, but maintain it as a single piece spline with the slightly adjusted configuration at the locations of the removed points. It is very helpful for fixing any artifacts in our dynamic wire effect and improving its general shape. All the best and see you in the next tutorial!